This is section 9.5 on weight and mass. When we're measuring weight, we're talking about how heavy an object is. So when we discuss weight, we're referring to things like a 12 ounce box of cereal, an overweight 19 pound tabby cat, or a barge hauling 24 tons of garbage. The US system of measurement uses the ounce, the pound, and the ton to measure weight. So here are some US units of weight. For example, 16 ounces is the same as one pound, so here are the two unit fractions that would go with that. 2,000 pounds is equal to one ton, so here are the two unit fractions that would go with pounds and tons. Let's do some examples of converting from one unit to another within the US system. First of all, if we have 192 ounces and we want to convert it to pounds, here again is where we're going to use our unit fractions. So remember we want a fraction that's going to relate the two units we're looking at. So we're looking at the fact that 16 ounces equals one pound. And then we want to write a fraction using these two quantities. And our original unit is the one that we want to go on the bottom. The unit we're converting to is the one we want on the top. So the unit fraction we would use would be one pound over 16 ounces. So again, the ounces that we started with goes on the bottom the pounds that we're converting to goes on the top. Now we have 192 ounces times one pound over 16 ounces. And again, we're going to write our original units over one so that we can do the multiplication with the fractions. And here's why it's so important to write the units in because now we can see we picked the right unit fraction because these two units cancel and the one that we're left with is pounds, which is what we want. Now we have, in the numerator of this, we have 192 times one pound. In the denominator, we have one times 16, and we don't have any units left. Now to write this in simplest form, form we need to divide 192 by 16. 16 goes into 19 once. If we subtract there, we get 32, and 16 goes into 32 twice. So 192 divided by 16 is 12, and that means that this would be the same as 12 pounds. Now let's convert from 8,800 8, pounds to tons, and here we're going to round to the nearest tenth of a ton if we need to. So for our unit fractions, we need to use the conversion from pounds to tons and that says that 2,000 pounds is equal to one ton. So our unit fraction, we want to put this one on the bottom since it's our original unit, and we want to put tons on the top since that's what we're converting to. So we've had to have one ton over 2,000 pounds. That's the unit fraction we're going to use. Now we have 8,800 pounds times one ton over 2,000 pounds. We'll write this over one, and then our pounds cancel out. Now we have 8,800 times one ton on the top. That just give us, gives us 8,800 tons. On the bottom we have 2,000. So now we need to divide the 8,800 by the 2,000. Well, 2,000 would go into 8,000 four times. and four times 2,000 is 8,000, so when we subtract we get 800. Now we're going to round to the nearest tenth, so we'll probably have to go out to the hundredth place here. So now we have 2,000 into 8,000, that's four times again. And this time we got a remainder of zero, so we're done here. This gives us 4.4 tons. Now let's convert from 6.7 pounds to ounces. And again here we're rounding to the nearest tenth of an ounce. So for our unit fraction, we know that 16 ounces is equal to one pound. We want pounds to go on the bottom of this one, since that's the unit we started with, and we want ounces to go on the top, since that's what we're converting to. So now we have 6.7 pounds times 16 ounces over one pound. We're writing this over one. Our pounds cancel out and we're left with the ounces. So now we have 6.7 times 16 ounces all over one. 
So we're going to have to multiply the 6.7 times the 16. So that's 42. 36 plus 4 is 40. And here we have 7, 6. And when we add, we get a 2, a 7, and a 10. Now since we're multiplying decimals, we do have to put our decimal point in. We had one decimal point here and none here. So we're going to have to put one decimal point in our answer. That gives us 107 and 2 tenths of an ounce. Now we have a shipping company that charges extra for packages weighing more than 2 pounds 8 ounces. If a package weighs 3 pounds 10 ounces, how far over the limit is it? So we want to know the difference between these two values. So the difference between 3 pounds 10 ounces and 2 pounds 8 ounces and this means that we're subtracting. So we're going to actually subtract our 3 pounds 10 ounces. From that we're going to subtract the 2 pounds 8 ounces. And again I'm lining up the pounds and the ounces just like we would line up place values if we were subtracting decimals. So 10 minus 8 gives us 2 ounces here and 3 minus 2 gives us 1 pound. So the difference is 1 pound 2 ounces and that means the package is 1 pound 2 ounces over the limit. Okay, now when we talk about mass, most of the time mass and weight really mean the same thing. The only time they don't is if you are not on Earth where gravity is less. So for example on the Moon, you would still have the same mass as you have on the Earth, but your weight would actually be different. And when we talk about metric units, we usually call them metric units of mass. But we're really talking about the same thing as when we talk about weight in U.S. units. So the basic unit of mass in the metric system is the gram, and this is the same as the mass of water, or in other words, the weight of water, if we're on Earth, contained in a cube one centimeter on each side. Here are some examples. A tablet that contains 200 milligrams of ibuprofen. A large paper clip weighs approximately one gram. A box of crackers weighs 453 grams. A kilogram is slightly over two pounds. So an adult woman may weigh 60 kilograms. That's going to be a little bit more than 120 pounds. Since we're in the metric system, we have the same prefixes that we did when we were talking about measurements of length. So we have kilo, hecto, deca, deci, centi, and milli. And the units that's in the middle of this, again, is one gram. The three that we use the most commonly are the milligram, the gram, and the kilogram. And remember with the metric system, all of the units are, are powers of 10 of the basic unit, which is the gram. So to convert from one unit to another, we only have to move the decimal point. And here again, we're going to write out our units in order from largest down to smallest. And that will help us know how many places to move the decimal point. So here's an example. If we wanted to convert from centigrams to grams, here's where we're starting, here's where we're ending, so we're going to go two places to the left. So let's use this to convert 4 and 7500 centigrams to grams. Well, all we would have to do would be to move this decimal point two places to the left, and that would give us this value. Notice all we did was move our decimal point to the left by two places. So let's do a few of these conversions. If we want to convert from 27 kilograms to grams, let's write the whole list up here. Just to remind ourselves. Okay, there's our whole list from, from greatest down to smallest. So if we're going from kilograms to grams, then we're going to go start here and go one, two, three to the right. So that means we started out with 27, our decimal point would start there, 
and we go three places to the right, that puts it there, and we have to put our three zeros in as placeholders. So that means that 27 kilograms would be the same as 27,000 grams. Now for this one, we're going from milligrams to grams. So here we're starting at milligrams, and we're going one, two, three to the left this time. So we have our 1,035. Our decimal point starts there, and we're going one, two, three to the left. So it's ending right there. That gives us one and 35 thousandths of a gram. Now let's go from centigrams all the way up to kilograms. So let's see how many places we're going. We're starting here, going one, two, three, four, five places to the left. So we have our 8,360. There's our decimal point to start with. One, two, three, four, five places to the left. We have to put a zero in there as a placeholder. So that means we have a zero before the decimal point and one after the decimal point. And there's our answer. Now what if we have a bottle that weighs 125 grams and we want to find the weight in kilograms of two dozen of these bottles? So first of all, we know two dozen is the same as 24. If we have 24 of these bottles, let's figure out how much that would weigh in grams. So in grams, 24 bottles would weigh 24 times the weight of one bottle. So it would weigh 24 times 125 grams. Let's multiply that out. 4 times 5 is 20. Carry the 2. That would give us 10. Carry the 1 would give us a 5. And here we'd have 2 times 10. 2 times 5 is 10. And we get a 5 and a 2. We have those two, we get 10. Carry the 1, we get 3,000. So this is actually equal to 3,000 grams. Now, since we wanted to find our weight in kilograms, we're going to convert from grams to kilograms. So back up to our list up here. If we're going from grams to kilograms, we're starting here and counting over 1, 2, 3 to the left. So with our 3,000, our decimal point is there, and we're going 1, 2, 3 to the left. That would give us 3. We could write the zeros after the decimal point, but we could just write this as a whole number, so this would be 3 kilograms. So that means the bottles would weigh 3 kilograms.